Alice had a crucial appointment that morning, and she knew that her performance would be decisive for her future in the company. However, the young woman did not imagine that before that, she would have to act like a heroine to save a man's life, a courageous act that would end up costing her the job. Hello, my friends. This is Revenge Story Times. I hope you enjoyed this story. Alice woke up to the shrill sound of the alarm clock, her heavy eyes slowly opening to stare at the white ceiling of her small apartment. It was another workday at the financial company where she had been employed for almost three years. As she got ready in front of the mirror, Alice observed her reflection, a youthful face framed by wavy brown hair that fell over her shoulders. Dressed in an elegant business outfit, she grabbed her bag and hurried out. The route to the imposing commercial building where she worked was always the same, crowded subway, bustling sidewalks, and the constant hum of the big city. Alice observed the people around her, each one rushing to their commitments, living their own stories. Before entering the building, Alice made her usual stop at the corner coffee shop. The aroma of freshly brewed coffee filled her nostrils as soon as she opened the door, bringing an involuntary smile to her lips. It was then that her eyes met Jacob's. Jacob was a man with a mature and charming face, his dark hair had a few gray strands at the temples, giving him a distinguished look. He wore a well-tailored suit that accentuated his athletic build. His brown eyes had a mischievous sparkle when they met Alice's. Good morning, Alice, Jacob greeted her with a warm smile. Ready for another day? Alice felt her heart speed up slightly, this morning flirtation with Jacob had become a precious part of her routine over the past few months. Good morning, Jacob. Always ready, she replied with a playful tone. While they waited for their orders, the two exchanged glances and knowing smiles. Alice loved this light and uncommitted game of seduction, it was a fun way to start the day, even though she had never accepted Jacob's invitations for a real date. With coffee in hand, they bid each other farewell and went their separate ways. Alice entered the building where she worked, greeting the doorman and a few colleagues in the elevator. Upon reaching her floor, she was met with an unusual buzz. Have you heard about the new financial manager? A colleague asked excitedly as soon as Alice sat at her desk. New manager? I didn't know we were hiring someone, Alice responded, curious. Melissa leaned in, lowering her voice, they say he's young and brilliant. He came from a big company and is going to bring an entirely new vision to the sector. I've heard he's already in the building in a meeting with Mr. Thompson. Alice nodded, absorbing the information. Changes always brought a mix of anticipation and apprehension. She wondered how it would be to work with this new manager and if it would affect her position in the company. Throughout the day, Alice found herself occasionally looking towards the meeting room, hoping to catch a glimpse of the mysterious new manager. At one point, she saw him leaving but managed to get only a view of his back, a tall man with broad shoulders dressed in a flawless dark suit. At the end of the workday, Alice was called into her supervisor's office. Alice, I have a special task for you, he said with a smile. I want you to prepare the welcome presentation for the new financial manager. It will be tomorrow morning, so I need it to be impeccable. Alice felt a mixture of pride and anxiety, it was an opportunity to stand out but also a great responsibility. You can count on me, she responded confidently. That night, Alice stayed up late working on the presentation. She wanted each slide to be perfect, every piece of information accurate and relevant. When she finally went to sleep, it was already past midnight, but she felt satisfied with the result. The following morning, Alice woke up earlier than usual, anxious for the big day. She carefully chose her outfit, a navy blue dress that fit her well, paired with a light blazer. She wanted to look professional and confident. As usual, she stopped by the coffee shop, her heart skipped a beat when she saw Jacob. He looked especially smart that day, wearing a gray suit that seemed tailor-made. Going to a wedding today, Jacob? Alice teased, a mischievous smile on her lips. I hope it's not yours, or I'll be heartbroken, Jacob laughed, his eyes sparkling with amusement. A wedding? Only if you're the bride, he replied, joining in the fun. Then his face took on a more serious expression, although he was still smiling. Actually, today I start a new job, Alice raised her eyebrows in surprise. 
Really? That's great, Jacob, congratulations. Thank you, he replied, adjusting his tie. Then, with a hopeful look, he added, how about you finally accept my invitation and we go out for dinner tonight to celebrate my new job? Alice hesitated for a moment, normally, she would decline, keeping that relationship at the level of casual flirting. But today, fueled by her own excitement about the presentation she was going to give, she felt bolder. I think this is a good reason for a dinner, she responded with a smile. Jacob's eyes lit up at the positive reply. They exchanged phone numbers and agreed to meet later. They left the cafe together, excitedly chatting about their plans for the evening. Then it all happened within seconds. Distracted by the conversation and with his eyes fixed on Alice, Jacob didn't realize he was nearing the edge of the sidewalk. Alice, watch out, she shouted, her body acting on instinct. With a swift motion, she grabbed Jacob's arm, pulling him back with all the strength she could muster. The tug was sufficient to pull Jacob out of the bus's direct path, but not enough to completely avoid the impact. The vehicle's mirror struck the side of Jacob's head, causing him to stagger backward and fall onto Alice. The world seemed to turn in slow motion. Alice felt Jacob's weight on her, heard the frightened screams of the people around them, and the piercing sound of the bus brakes. Her heart was racing, a mix of fear and adrenaline coursing through her veins. Jacob! Jacob, are you okay? She called, her voice trembling with concern. But Jacob did not respond, remaining motionless on top of her. Soon, a small crowd gathered around them. Someone shouted that an ambulance was on the way. Alice, still trapped under Jacob's body, tried to stay calm, checking his breathing and pulse, relieved to find that both were present. When the ambulance arrived, the paramedics acted quickly, placing Jacob on a stretcher. Alice insisted on accompanying him to the hospital, her own body aching from the impact of the fall, being ignored in light of her concern for Jacob. At the hospital, Alice waited anxiously for news, pacing back and forth in the waiting room. After what seemed like an eternity, a doctor appeared to speak with her. Miss, Mr. Jacob is out of danger, the doctor informed with a reassuring smile. Despite the impact, there were no serious injuries. He is conscious now, but we will keep him under observation for today, just as a precaution. Alice let out a sigh of relief, feeling as if a huge weight had been lifted from her shoulders. Can I see him? She asked hopefully. The doctor nodded, sure, but just for a few minutes. He needs to rest. Alice entered the room quietly. Jacob was lying in bed, a bandage on his temple. His eyes opened at the sound of her footsteps, and a faint smile appeared on his lips. My heroine, he murmured. Alice felt tears welling up in her eyes. Jacob, you gave me quite a scare. Sorry about that, he replied, his voice still a bit hoarse. I guess I'll have to postpone our celebration. Alice laughed softly, relieved to see that he still had his sense of humor. We have time for that. The important thing is for you to get well. They talked for a few minutes until a nurse came in, indicating that the visiting time was over. Alice said her goodbyes. It was only when she left the hospital that Alice realized two things, first, that her cell phone had broken in the fall, and second, that she was terribly late for work. With a jolt of panic, she ran to catch a taxi. Upon arriving at the office, Alice was immediately called into her supervisor's office. His face was red with irritation. Alice, where have you been? Everyone was waiting for you to organize the welcome for the new manager. I'm sorry, sir, Alice began, trying to catch her breath. There was an accident. I had to accompany someone to the hospital. The supervisor frowned. An accident? With whom? Alice hesitated for a moment. A friend. The supervisor's expression hardened. Alice, did you abandon an important responsibility to chase after a boyfriend? It's not exactly like that, Alice tried to explain, feeling increasingly uncomfortable. It was a real emergency. My phone broke. I couldn't give notice. Where is the new manager? I want to apologize in person. He hasn't arrived yet. 
We don't know the reason, but that doesn't matter now. Alice, you know that you and your department colleague, Thomas, are occupying similar positions, and a cut was already planned. Your irresponsible behavior today just made my decision easier, said the supervisor with a firm voice. Alice felt as if the ground had disappeared beneath her feet. What? What do you mean? The supervisor sighed heavily. I'm sorry, Alice, but we are terminating your contract with the company. Please go to the department to settle the details of your departure. Alice left the room in a state of shock, her world seemed to have turned upside down in a matter of hours. She packed her things in silence, ignoring the curious looks and whispers from her colleagues. Three days after the incident, Alice returned to the company to sign the final documents of her termination. Her heart was heavy as she rode the elevator for the last time. As she exited on the office floor, she nearly bumped into someone who was entering. Alice? She looked up, surprised to hear the familiar voice. It was Jacob, impeccably dressed in a dark suit, looking completely recovered from the accident. Jacob, what are you doing here? Alice asked, confused. Jacob looked at her with an expression of surprise equal to hers. I, I work here now. I'm the new financial manager. Alice felt like she had been punched in the stomach, all the air seemed to vanish from her lungs. Jacob was the new manager, for whom she was supposed to have prepared the welcome presentation. The man who had caused her to lose her job was, in fact, her new boss. Alice, what happened? Why are you here? Jacob asked, noticing her troubled expression. Alice took a deep breath, trying to hold back the tears that threatened to fall. I, I was fired, Jacob, for not showing up on the day of your welcome presentation. Jacob's face turned pale as he understood the situation. Oh, Alice, I'm so sorry. This is my fault. Alice shook her head, forcing a weak smile. It's not your fault, Jacob. It was an accident. Jacob remained silent for a moment, clearly disturbed by the revelation. Then a small smile appeared at the corner of his lips. Well, look on the bright side. If you were still working here, I would be your boss, and it wouldn't be ethical to take you out to dinner. Despite the situation, Alice couldn't help but let out a soft laugh. Jacob's ability to find humor even in the toughest moments was one of the things she admired most about him. I suppose you're right, she replied, feeling a bit of the weight on her chest dissipate. Jacob looked at her with determination. Alice, I promise I will do my best to fix this. Alice felt a wave of gratitude. Thank you, Jacob. That means a lot to me. In the days that followed, Jacob kept his promise. He used his contacts to help Alice get interviews at other companies. One week later, she received a job offer from a company Jacob had previously worked with. The new job was even better than the previous one, Alice found herself in a position with more responsibilities and better growth prospects. She was grateful for the opportunity and determined to make the most of it. Over time, the relationship between Alice and Jacob blossomed, free from the complications of a boss-subordinate relationship. They were finally able to explore the feelings they had been nurturing for each other for months. Their first official date was a dinner at a cozy restaurant with a view of the river. Alice wore a red dress that made Jacob's eyes shine with admiration. The conversation flowed naturally, filled with laughter and affectionate glances. You know, Jacob said at one point in the evening, holding Alice's hand across the table, I think I should thank that bus. Alice raised an eyebrow, amused. Oh, really? And why is that? Jacob smiled, his eyes for hers. Because if it weren't for the bus, you wouldn't have been late or gotten fired, and I couldn't say I love you. Alice felt her heart race at his words. Well, next time you want to impress me, how about just asking me out? It's way less dangerous, she joked. Jacob laughed, leaning in to plant a gentle kiss on Alice's lips. I promise that from now on, I'll keep our dates accident-free. Life had a funny way of working out, Alice reflected. She had lost a job but gained a better opportunity. More importantly, she had found someone who made her smile every day, 
someone with whom she wanted to share not just breakfast but also dinners, weekends, and who knows, maybe a whole lifetime. If you enjoyed, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment with a number from 1 to 5 to let us know how much you like the story. Also, watch the video that is currently on your screen. See you soon.